Alright, greetings brothers, and I am Nelov, and today we're going to be talking something more casual than I usually do. Usually I talk about the lore, the history of the Legion, or maybe a chapter, but which I haven't done yet, but I will eventually if I find one interesting. And also some certain battles that I talk about as well, but today we're going to be talking about more like a an idea or assumption as you call it, because I can't find a word for it right now, because um, I'm a little bit off script uh, for this video, but... We're gonna be think we're gonna be talking about of the weapons that existed in the medieval period that has good functionality that can work in in the 40k setting. Now, of course, there are already weapons that are already in 40k that are already being inspired by the culture or the certain period of time of that culture that was already in 40k. And a good example is the Thousand Suns sword, and you know, and obviously like the Dark Angels that have that knight kind of feeling as well and obviously the space wolves as well is another example that has that viking uh furry <coughs> culture but even so i'm thinking about like having the weapons that have like actual function that it can work for most of the chapters and not not only just like for the culture and um, period of time that suits for them but i'm just generally going for um, the broad section of oh this is a universal weapon that most chapters could use in the imperium and some weapons I will talk about, they already exist in Warhammer Fantasy or AUS, but uh, the problem is I don't have not, not, not much knowledge of that lore specifically, but what I do know a little bit is from the game Vermintide 2 that I've played a little bit and uh, not addicted too much on that game. And so I have a rough idea of what weapons that we use roughly. So it's kind of like medieval renaissance period mixtured uh, to what I understand. But then again, as I said, I do not have much knowledge with that lore in that perspective. But I do know enough about 40k. The existing 40k melee weapons that exist in the 40k Imperium or most commonly the Space Marines uh, kit would be a chainsword, a power fist, a chain fist, thunder hammer, a power maul, a uh, power sword as well, and a crozier's arcanum. Obvious, uh, most likely our crozier's arcanum does more than just being a melee weapon, but I just wanted to put that category because that's partly as a melee weapon itself. Now, interesting enough, with a chainsword, it's not only restricted to that design model, there's like so many other designs that you can use with a chainsword, like a chain spear, chain fist, as I mentioned before, and they can use for like chain bayonets and probably many more that I don't remember from memory right now, from my head. So those are one of those uh, examples. And one more example that I just remembered right now is a frostbite chainsword, which is a most common space wolf weapon, which is uh, all the monomonocular teeth that are all around the sword which I will be showing in the image. So that kind of chainsword does exist and it doesn't restrict to one thing. I am not too knowledgeable with the Crozier's Arcanum, but so as far as I understand with the weapon itself, obviously you can melee with it and beat the shit out of it. And you can use, I'm assuming some psychic fields. Like I'm thinking about like that episode, not episode, the movie uh, Ultramarines, where there's that Imperial Fist chaplain and just tells the Black Legion um, space Chaos Space Marines to fuck off. So uh, that's one thing I'm assuming it does. But it could be doing more. I, I would like to know a, a little bit more if you want to bring it up. Your choice. That is mostly what the Space Marines will use in their arsenal. Now, obviously, there are so much more melee weapons that can be used for each chapter. But I just picked one of those because I thought those were the most common ones. But if you think that I missed any of them... Just let me know in the comments and I'll give it a look. And um, yeah, I would do something. So now the medieval weapons that it existed back in the past that could be used against in the 40k times against a space marine, we go for the sword category. And it's not that long. It's just like three different weapons. Like we got the arming sword, which is a one-handed sword that was being used most commonly in the medieval time for mostly like for self-defense because in the battlefield you have like pike formations or any other primary weapon you would use in the medieval time 
So Arming Sword is more of a secondary use, and I think this would use pretty well against a Space Marine who would use mostly a Bolter on his hands and shoot the enemy, and if they get close, then they can draw out a Arming Sword as a backup weapon. Obviously there is a Bolt Pistol they could use, but let's just say if they get a little bit too close, and if they want to defend themselves by close combat, then a sword would be technically more preferable than a sidearm, if they don't have enough time to pull it out to for the sidearm. And let's say if you are like your Space Marine to have, be in close combat and fight to the death, well, luckily enough, with the arming sword, even though it's one-handed, the other hand can be free. You can use like a, like a pistol bolter, which is a proper bolter, or even better, that will protect the Space Marine even better, is having a shield. Now, compared to medieval times, we had rounded shields, kite shields, um, interesting enough, a spike perverse shield and a heater shield. Now, of course, we can use like 40k shield ele elements, like a breach shield, as far as I'm aware. And there's like other types of shields that I couldn't figure it out what the, what they named, but they have interesting similar shapes to medieval times. But I'm just gonna go with the medieval shields that they could use. The Space Marines, even though they have armor upon them, that they are com completely protected, but with a shield, it will even give them even more protection when they go in close combat, because, let's not forget, even some bolter shells can get into the, um, the Space Marine's armor. And once it gets into the armor, it can also explode, because technically it is a rocket-projected um, bullets. They can just get onto your armor and then just explode. But with shields, they can provide you much more better protection when going against, like, bolts of fire. But it's not always 100% guaranteed, but it's just more way more safer when you're trying to get, when you're trying to close a gap between the enemy who is firing at you, between you having a melee weapon. It is pretty interesting that you, we could do much more with these shields, that we can make it similar to a breacher shield where you can put a hole on the side and put your bolter there and shoot in the enemy as you're closing the, uh, their ranks. But at the same time, I personally do like have a fully closed shield and block anything that comes towards it, and I will just close the gap and hit the enemy at close quarters. But then again, that's my personal take. Well, there's always uh, a way to make these shields a lot more better. But those are the ideas. For clubs and maces, we have the flange mace, which is similar what horrors use, but it, this is more of a blunt weapon that it could be really used really well against armor. And I'm not sure that how effective against space marine armor would it be, but if it was like a powered mole or powered flanged mace, then I believe it would do like devastating damage. And plus, it's a one-handed weapon that you can use. You can use it with a shield, and you can just batter the enemies with it. It is pretty, pretty grim, pretty, pretty dangerous, but it's a very interesting weapon. There is a man, another weapon called the Pakaplankin, which is pretty much a spiked mace, which does the same devastating damage, but one will give, like, blunt trauma, but the other one will just technically pierce through armor. Now, I'm not sure how thick is the Space Marine armor, but if it was spiking enough that it can penetrate through the Space Marine armor, then it can do lots of damage. And at the same time, you could say it can cause a little bit of bleeding, but since we know that Space Marines can self-regenerate really well, but depends how devastating the damage is, then the Peck and Plankin can do enough damage. And we also have the Morning Stars, which is pretty much another mace, but it has like a bolt tip on top with some spikes around it. And it does the same thing, but it compares between the Pekka Plankin and the Flange Mace, where it gives a lot of blunt trauma, but it has that spiky bits that it can give like very devastating damage. Now, if it was hit to the head, say goodbye to it. You could say this is similar to Logar's weapon as well, which is a bit over like too much too big to be honest but it can be used like one-handed two-handed but uh, as far as i can tell it's mostly used two-handedly so you can just like whack it out and just hit them to, like to a certain weak spot and do like a saying a lot of damage and if this is, was like a power weapon i think it would do even much more damage against like a space marine with blunt force 
now we have the flail. This is like an interesting weapon because you cannot use this weapon on a 1v1 scale, which technically you could, but the problems with this flail is you can't parry with it and you can't do much self-defense uh, other than just attacking. And not only that, when you attack, there might be a possibility that it will come back and hit you and you will injure yourself. So most likely to, as far as I've been found out when, when I looked around and looked online, is that the flails could be mostly used for cavalry because when you're on a horseback, let's just say if you had a, like a spear and trying to stab someone on the horse with a spear against an enemy, and then you just stab the enemy, all that force goes through the spear onto you and it puts a lot of pressure and it pushes you back. Compare that to a flail, the flail will just knock someone out and because the force, it doesn't go, it doesn't travel through to the flail to the, the body itself to force you back, they will just knock the ball back and you can just keep swinging it and knock out people. So mostly this mace would be more practical to be used like on jet bikes and like any mobile units that you could just go against the enemy and then start swinging that flail and knock and, and do like bonking shit on top of them, which is pretty fun. There's also like two, three ball maces that can be used, but I don't quite understand the purpose of it. Like technically it would be way more better just to have like one one large mace where all the force can be concentrated and then when you're on like a like a white scar using a flail and knock someone out with it then that would be really really helpful and plus blunt damage and you know you can make it even spiked if you would like and it does a lot of harm on them so yeah the flail is interesting you can't use it in a way for a 1v1 combat unless it was your last choice of any other weapon when you're in the middle of the battle but I think this weapon is more for cavalry uses than like generally uh, like a secondary weapon, backup weapon or primary weapon in general. So another weapon that I found interesting was a horseman pick and a horseman pick is which is which is one side a hammer and another side it has a long beak of a pick. And this was used in the medieval times that you can use it against anti armor. And interesting enough that this could be used in the 40k setting where you could just come in and then just you know take someone in and pick them out with the pick or use the blunt force with it and you will get like a lot of damage out of that like let's just say since this will be like a power weapon i i think you can pierce through armor really really well now the one thing i'm not too sure is how hard it is to take it out because obviously you can go and take it in and stab them but let's not forget this is space marines they can like take it and then probably still fight even though if they take like a like a devastating um a thrust from the pick itself but if it was like a blunt force from it then it would do really really well because if, if it's concentrated to the head or maybe to the chest or like any other joints around the body it can do really well Maybe for the pick as well, it will do the same effect, which it will go through them, but at the same time that the Space Marine can like self-heal, but depends how devastating the damage is. Now the most common weapon would be the spears, and the spears is the origin of the family of the polearms that comes in many, many variety out of it. But with the spears itself, it can come like short, medium, long and the spears can go so long that even compared to the alexander the great with the uh, pike phalanx formation it can go up to like 20 meters it is that absurd but also in the medieval time they can be used for many things so like you can use it during a battlefield on the war you can use it for fishing and then surprisingly enough for a, let's just say a short spear staff you can use it for like a javelin an example but those are for like short ones and not only that the spear is just a wooden shaft and you have a metal tip on top so you can have a spike with an axe or just have a spike or just have a leaf design spike to use it as a normal spear and examples like that, there are so much things that you can use with a, just a wooden shaft and put a metal tip on top. And I will give it examples of the amount of uh, spears you can use. And that's why it was so common in the medieval period, because it's just the longer reach you have, 
the more you will possibly win battles. Would you lose at some point against a person with a sword who knows really well against a spear? Yes. But that will be a bit difficult, but it is plausible that it can happen. So other than having a spear in the polearm category, we have the wing spear, which is pretty much a normal spear, but it has the wings on the side. And what's the purpose of that? And the purpose of that is not letting the spear to get cut too deep into the enemy to the point that you can't pull it out afterwards. So that's where that's why the wing spears are exist because obviously don't cut too deep and it will stop to a certain length where the bl where the blade can just cut in. On one hand, you could say, well, yeah, the Space Marines can stab them really good and deep, but they can pull it out with ease. But I'm thinking of, of well, let's just say, what if they have a struggle and the uh, and doesn't pull it out? That's why the Wind Spears can help them on that. Now, another polearm is a Corsac, and the Corsac is similar to a Wing Spear, but the difference is, is that you have the metal tip in the middle, and then you have another two spikes on the side which is pretty much almost does the same thing, but the difference is, is that you can stab in two to three different angles. And that's pretty much what it is. I'm not too sure uh, in the medieval times if they had troubles with this spear because it's stabbing in three different directions and I'm not too sure that if it gets stuck into an enemy or you have like a struggle to pull it out against the enemy, but I don't think it cuts too deep so i don't think like either a human who would not have like a, that much struggle and same for a space marine with it as well and another interesting polearm would be a glaive and a glaive is really popular in the chinese glaive where it is a like a single bladed spear that you could just cut them on the side i looked up if they had like similar medieval weapons and there are some but I'm not sure if they are glaives itself. But it looks really interesting that, that these can be used in the 40k setting, where maybe you have a chapter that most of them will just use glaives because, you know, it rules. It, it's pretty cool. And of course, glaives can come, like, in different varieties, and I think I might be wrong with this, but a glaive has, like, a metal tip on top as well, not sure what the purpose of that is for, but as far as I'm aware, it's more like like just a single bladed um, sword with a staff and you could just cut enemies through it. But the issue with the glaive, if it was used against a space marine is, will it do well against armor? Unless if it doesn't do well against armor, then you have to find like a weak point in order to get into it. But then again, as I said before, it has the range, the distance, so it can keep away the enemies away. If it was like a duel and they don't use a, like a bolter or they agree to do like a fight of honor, but it all depends with that. Now, one of the most popular weapons would be the halberd and the halberd obviously comes in a lot of different designs. Like, let me tell you that it comes in a very, like it comes in so much variety of things. Like you can have a halberd without a spike and just has like an ax and a spike behind or like a, like a, a beak at the back and there's like other different variety of axes as well, so it just doesn't come with one thing. But the halberd itself, ideally, is just an axe on the front, um, a spike on top, where you can use it as a spear, and a um, like a spike at the back. That's the ideal of a halberd is. And this could be really interesting if it was used um, well on a Space Marine chapter. And I technically, you could say this could be used um, without a spike on top, where you can use it as a spear, but you can use it as a, like a spear bolter weapon, like a custodian's, but I would actually comment something with a different weapon that looks really similar to a custodian weapon, but I think this would be really nice, uh, weapon to use, um, with the Space Marine chapter. Of course, if they were, like, elite, like, uh, like an elite, uh, Praetorians of a chapter master, let's say, then I would say they would look really cool to use a halberd. Now, the weapon that I was about to talk about that really looks similar to a custodian um, spear uh, weapon that has like a bolt in the front and this like an axe or a sword looking on the bottom, it is a bardi, bardike, bar, bardike, bardiche, 
Okay, I, I butcher in either way. And a Baduche is interestingly a... It's kind of like an axe, but it can be used in a way like a sword. And interestingly enough, if you had a Space Marine chapter that had similar uh, weapon that looked like like a bar Bardiche. <laughs> oh my god, it, it is pretty difficult to pronounce this. But let's just say the Bardiche itself, where you can have like a bolter in front and just have like a like anything that a Space Marine can hold at the back. And then you can have the, the big blade on the bottom. They can be used like an axe or like in a way like a spike tip on the front. It is a really interesting weapon. Um, maybe this was influenced to make like a custodian weapon. I'm not too sure, but it has a lot of um, similarities because uh, you have the, the shaft and then you have the axe variety and that gap on top could be used for like like a bolt pistol or something. So just thought this would be interesting enough to bring it up. Now, another polearm that I found it really interesting that could be used in the 40k setting is a Bectic Corbin. I hope that I pronounced that right. And what's interesting about this is instead of looking like a halberd where you have the axe on front of it, you're going to have a hammer on the long stick. And pretty much blunt force. You can have you can use it as a spear to spike them, and you can just like swap from the hammer to the pick, and then you can just stab with them with it. Not too sure if you know it can be easily pulled out, which I'm certain it is possible because I don't think it pierces that much into the armor. But if it does, then there's the other assumptions of can it be pulled out easier? But then again, Space Marines can pull it out pretty easily, so no problem. And I do like this weapon specifically just because it's a hammer. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hammer pull arm. But you can obviously do many things with a hammer. Like you can have um, like a flat surface or one has like maybe a spike. But I might be wrong with this one because I've seen images and I might get this wrong. So if you would like to let me know, let me know. Because I technically still, I'm still learning of this. And finally with the pull arm, we have the uh, spear staff. But personally, I would call it the sword staff because it is pretty much replacing a um, either a long sword or arming sword and stick it to a long stick. And then you have a sword staff. But unfortunately, these weren't mm, commonly used in the past. So we have a little bit of sources here and there. And they were used in Sweden at the end of the medieval times. But other than that, we didn't have any much more sources from it. But... It was interesting enough that it existed in the medieval times or back in the day in general. So this could technically be used um, in the 40k setting where you can just have a power sword, stick it to a spear and then boom, you know, power spear sword. And it could do the same effect like an arming and a long sword maybe and power it up. And plus, since you have like longer reach against them, then he would do much more effective uh, work or job either way. But I just find it really nice because sword staff. All right, that's all it. So thank you very much for watching my mumbling all over the place. Uh, I am not an expert with these weapons. I just found something interesting and being like, oh, maybe I should make a video about it because I just found it interesting. And I kind of want to learn about more about like medieval weapons back in the day. And if you're knowledgeable yourself and you want to share your knowledge to me or someone else who watches this video and is curious about, you know, there's much more medieval weapons that can be used in the past, well, always, always share your thoughts in the comments if you would like. But yeah, this is not a usual video because uh, I, I usually go scripted, but this is more of a casual video, so I'm just like, hey, you know, mumbo jumbo, no script, well, I have a script, but it has like a list of weapons, so I have to go through memory of it and be like, oh, what well, what can this be interesting about it? But overall, I, I I pretty much had fun with it making this video, and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you're knowledgeable of of like things like in the medieval time, uh, you know, just share it in the comments if you like, because um, I I'm technically still learning about this, and I would like to learn more about the medieval stuff. Um, if you're willing to share it, be my guest because I, I'm willing to learn about it. And plus, I'm kind of doing like Hima solo training thing. So, you know, it's a bit unnecessary to mention it. But I was like, eh, you know, that, that's that's how much like interest I have at the moment. And hopefully I'll go more through it.
So yeah, that's all it for today, my brothers. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're new to this channel, you know what to do. I don't have to tell you. And farewell, my brothers, and take care.